Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about my experience reading uh, Nectar in the Sea by Kamala Markandeya, um, which I personally feel is a very affecting novel. I think that has been the word that I use a lot in um, my sort of my comments or reviews about this book in other channels as well, Instagram, Goodreads. I use the word affecting because um, yeah, I think on some level I could sort of connect with this book. Um, I wouldn't say relatable, but I think, you know, a book doesn't have to be relatable to be good. Uh, the way this book is written, uh, the writing style, I think it feels kind of sincere. And yeah, I think that plays a, a, a huge part in influencing how I feel about this book. So this is, I would say, a modern classic. Um, it was published in the 50s, uh, 1954, I think. And, um, and it's a very simple book, actually. You know, it's, it's a slim book, yeah. But at the same time, in terms of what happens in it, the, the, the story, the plot, it is actually very simple. So this book features a, um, uh, a woman uh, who lives in a village in southern India. Uh, and the time was, I don't think it is explicitly mentioned in here, but it's around the time of, it could be before or, or it could be after uh, the, uh, the in independence of India. So um, I'm not sure if it's explicitly mentioned in here, but if you have any clue on when the story takes place, uh, do let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of like uh, my recollection of this. But anyway, it sort of happens around that time and I think it's kind of important as well to sort of give us on uh, a, a clue on what what is going on roughly what's going on in the society where uh, this main character her name is Rukmani is living in uh, at that time so anyway we have this character named Rukmani um, the story starts when she is a, uh, a young woman uh, I think she's 12 when she is married off to a a poor farmer. Now she's the last of uh, uh, of her father's children. I think she's the youngest, and so because of that, um, her family does not have enough dowry uh, for her marriage, and that is why she ends up marrying this, being married off to this poor farmer. But uh, despite that, her marriage with this farmer, in terms of their relationship, is is quite a good one. However, um, if you might, you know, maybe you have heard about this novel, or if you have not, this novel is about bad things happen to people. We have this main character, and basically, like I said, this novel is really simple. What happens in this novel is basically just a series of misfortunes that befall um, Rukmani and her family. But most of all, it focuses on Rukmani and how she sort of experiences all of these horrible things happening to her and her family and how she copes with them and how she how she process things essentially and um, how she comes out of each of those um, unfortunate events. So basically that's all this book is about. Um, reading this one, because of its length I thought it was going to be a quick read but at the same time, uh, because of the content, because of uh, all the horrible things that could happen, and in fact, these things are sort of foreshadowed in the book anyway, and the way that the book is written, the tone just kind of feels a little bit ominous. It doesn't, it is not ominous in the sense that, you know, definitely things are going to be bad right away, next page, next chapter. No, um, you, you do have some nice things happening once in a while in this book, but at the same time, um, because of the anticipation of um, possible bad things unfolding later in the book, it does make you feel kind of that, you know, that sense of dread. And it's not a book that you could read and be like, you know, smiling and feeling happy about because uh, coupled with how... I would say how nice the way the uh, the protagonist is portrayed in here, how vivid she or her character is portrayed. I think it 
it is easy to relate to the character and uh, easy to sort of empathize with her whenever something bad happens. So I think maybe that's why my reading on this is slowed down a little bit because when I read, when I read this, I sort of felt kind of, um, <laughs> I felt dread. I, I was, I think mainly it was the dread, you know, um, you, you don't want to know what happens next, but you want to know because you want to read the story. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's generally what the story is about. I don't want to tell you the details on what those horrible things that happened to Rukmani. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the character. Now, Rukmani is is a woman. And I think it, I would say it's understandable. that like, You know, the way that she's portrayed in here, I feel it sort of fits with who she is as a woman in her society at that time. Now, um... In her society, she, you know, as a woman, she doesn't have much agency. She doesn't have much power. Um, so many of the things that she does or things that she says reflects the views of how a woman should be at that time. Now, she thinks that, you know, she would think uh, that, you know, a woman's place is beside her husband and, you know, all the... Uh, womanly duties in a marriage that I would say modern day readers would bulk at but I think in terms of how it is portrayed I think it's quite um I feel that there is uh it it uh it feels true and it feels honest as well and I think that's really important because um the way the character progresses in this book she progresses in spite of that and you know the the things that she learned um it sort of interacts with that side of her you know with the uh um how she sort of has to navigate her life but at the same time also has a certain attitude towards uh her own station in her society um, again, I think that is one of the juiciest things about this book, you know, the character, character development. I mean, who doesn't like that? <laughs> anyway, um, throughout this book also, now I mentioned that she has a nice relationship with her husband. And I think that's a good thing because it kind of feels like a solve. <laughs> Uh, because this book is literally about bad things happening to her. And she has a good relationship with her husband. And one other character that often pops up in this book is a white doctor whose name is uh, Kennington, or as she calls it, Kenny. Now, Kenny is also a very important character, and I think that anyone who has read this book would probably have something to say about the inclusion of Kenny in here. Um, on one hand, I feel like Kenny could be, uh, could be, you know, this is arguable, um, the audience surrogate of, uh, in terms of, um, how Rukmani and her Indian society is portrayed in here. Now, Kenny is portrayed as someone who, well, you know, she, he comes from the outside world. He comes to India and, um, uh, his relationship with Rukmani is that they sort of are, at first, he is some sort of a benefactor to Rukmani, and Rukmani sort of worships him, um, respects him to the extent that, you know, Rukmani is sort of show that, you know, it, it feels a little bit like worship, which sort of makes him uneasy. But then uh, that relationship also develops, which I think is... Um, is something that is nicely written in this story because um, their relationship just sort of moves from that towards a slightly more, um, I would say, nuanced um, and at the same time, a nuanced dynamic, and at the same time uh, shows some growth, not only in Rukmani, but also in Kenny. So I think that part is also very interesting. Um, and, I, and I, I, I kind of like it, you know, this, this kind of evolution that happens with these two characters. Anyway, uh, yeah, I would say 
those are the things that I want to comment mainly on this book. Now, while I was reading this book, um, I can't help but make some sort of a connection with other books that I'm reading. And um, I think this might be strange, but w when reading this book, I can't help but to connect it with this. This is Stoner by John Williams. And I would say this book was, uh, I kind of forgot. This book was published sometime in the 60s, so it's not very, you know, too, not too far away from this one. Uh, some, you know, 10 years after that. But it's from a different country, it's from a different place. Uh, but I can't help that there is a little bit of similarity between these two books. Now, I said that this book is about bad things happening to a person over and over again. So much so that, you know, you could expect those bad things to really erode their morale, obviously their livelihood, and even their dignity. Or does it? Because reading this book, I would say, yeah, it's depressing. You can glean from the uh, reviews that, you know, this book is depressing. But at the same time, there is this sense of triumph. In fact, the way that this book starts, it actually starts out um, sometime at the end of or I would say towards the end of Rukmani's story, where she just sort of introduced to us, hey, I'm Rukmani, so this is my story. I mean, that's kind of like how chapter one starts. And so you could sort of feel that, you know, when you get to the end of this book, there is actually this kind of very quiet, triumphant moment. Now, that really reminds me of this one, because when I finished this book, this is also another book that many people have said to be kind of depressing but to me I feel that this book also represents that that kind of triumph a triumph in preserving one's dignity which is something that I find in here as well so I would say these two books they really talk about how dignity is something that is that can be important but the thing is, when when there is a triumph, when it comes to um, having your own dignity intact, it is not necessarily the kind of triumph that has the loudest fanfare. Um, especially, you know, in this one, because the things that the characters face in this is much harder uh, when, when you compare with this book. But um, the way that the character comes out towards the end, you could sense that there is this this sense of self, which is still intact. Um, so there is something that I really like about that. It feels very different from a traditional sense of success or victory or triumph where, you know, you just sort of, it, it, it becomes like really celebratory at the end. But I think, I don't know, I think it's important to have stories that also celebrate uh, triumph in a, in a very personal, quiet sense as well. And that, I would say, is also very important. And I realized that I like these kinds of stories. So if you have, you know, if, if you have read any stories, any novels, if you know any, that is also about this kind of stuff, you know, how... How, um, how a character just experienced some kind of um, triumph, but experiences it, uh, experiences it in such a way that it, it is only known to the self um, in a very satisfying way, but it is only known to the self. It's a very quiet thing. Um, people don't know about it. In fact, people who know the character probably think that the character is failing, but... You know, I really like this kinds of stories because there's something about this that feels very reassuring, you know, uh, especially at an age where success is just, you know, blared loudly <laughs> to everyone around you. Um, so, yeah, really like this book. Um, I did give it kind of three stars, but then again, my star ratings don't really matter <laughs> in the long run. Um, mainly because of 
the tone of this book, especially the way dialogues are written. Um, there is a bit of a soapy feel to the dialogues. The book was originally written in English, so it was not translated, um, or I mean at least officially, but there is this kind of... Um, uh, it feels like, sometimes, it feels like I'm watching a soap opera with the way that they speak, the, the, the kind of dramatic tones that they use when they speak, and it does feel kind of unbelievable sometimes <laughs> how they talk. Um, so that kind of breaks the immersion a little bit. Um, but overall, I think that this book has a wonderful content, so I definitely recommend this to everyone, and yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about this book in this video. If you have read this one, feel free to let me know what you think about it. So, until then, take care, thanks for watching, and bye.